I'm attempting to build a 100 game PlayStation collection from scratch in seven days. I'm doing this because as a kid, I adored my PlayStation 1, but as an adult, the only games I have in my collection are a sealed Disney's Magical Racing Tour and Pooh's Party Game. Oh, bother. And the best part is I'm going to do it all spending no money out of pocket. Folks, this is the PlayStation Project. Now there are two money making methods that I'm gonna use to build up a budget for PlayStation games throughout this challenge. I'll tell you guys about number two later, but number one is going to stores like this half price book, finding underpriced items to flip online and using the expected profit as my PlayStation game budget. I'll show you guys what I mean. stuff with my Amazon seller app to see how much I'd be able to get for it after fees. And this right here is the first solid item I've found to flip. As you can see, it's a black wireless Xbox 360 controller for 10 bucks. And I can see that conservatively after fees on Amazon, I could get 18 for it, which means we can put $8 into our PlayStation budget for the day. I looked up some games in this game case as well. I thought that maybe the NES would have some potential since it's brand new, but there just wasn't enough margin. So folks, I was just scanning through this Wii section here and found another really solid one, Ready to Rumble Revolution on the Wii. For six bucks, you guys can see, I'll be able to get 20 after fees for it on Amazon. Oh my gosh, people. I was just continuing to scan this shelf and I saw something potentially amazing. These two Mario Wii U games right here, I looked on top of them, they are sealed. And if this location didn't look up the prices and price them regularly, that could be a huge come up. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking right now. Yes, $19. Oh my gosh, this could be amazing. And the other one? Yes, 19 as well. Yes. All right, let's check this out. I just scanned the barcode. $51 after fees for this guy on Amazon. That's a $30 profit to spend on PlayStation games on this guy alone. Let's go. Now let's see if the Mario Kart is worth as much. Oh my gosh, $67 after fees. Money is not everything for, for this life. <laughs> this is amazing. I. I cannot think of a better start to this challenge. So between this controller and these games, this is $99 in expected profit on Amazon. So now that we have a $99 PlayStation budget, let's head over to the PlayStation shelf and see if there's anything that piques our interest. All right, so here's what we're working with at this location. Looks like a lot of sports stuff. Tiger, you have seen better days. Please end my suffering. Ooh, over here though, look at this. Lion King Simba's Mighty Adventure. Oh, dang it. As much as possible in this challenge, I'm gonna try to get games that at least look decent, so this one's probably gonna be a pass for me. Ooh, look at this though. Monsters Inc. Scream Team for just $6, and it's nice and complete. I'm a sucker for Disney PS1 games, so I'm gonna have to do this one for six bucks. Oh my gosh, I almost missed this one in the case. Look at this, folks. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. That's one that I played as a kid. It's on my list of games that I need to get, which I will show you guys later. And it's 25 bucks, which I feel like is a pretty decent deal. Oh my gosh, folks. The, this this first day of the challenge could not be going better. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That one looks good. I will do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do this one too then. Thank okay. you. Oh my gosh, what a whirlwind of a first stop. I need to update you guys. So I found the West Wing Complete series for $40. The white sticker let me know that it was marked down, so I scanned it, and I'll be able to profit about 15 on this. Also, I bought two consoles, the PS1, because I honestly didn't have one, because I flipped all the ones I've gotten. And I got this PS2 Slim, because it was only 50 bucks, which will get me 45 in profit. So at this stop, we found a total of $154 in profit, which means that after the 31 we just spent on these two PlayStation games, we still have a $123 in our PlayStation budget. Now I know. I know what you're thinking at this point. Caleb, that's so great. If only there were some cool and crafty way to keep track of our progress as we go throughout this series, that would really make my day. And I am so glad you just thought that. Put a little dent in it.
Yesterday, I literally spent like three hours building this PlayStation List poster board and coming up with 35 games that I would love to have in the collection. The green post-its are 10 games that I had in my childhood that I would love to have again. The yellows are actually from you guys. I asked you all, what are the PlayStation games that everybody needs to have in their collection? And 1.7 thousand of you left me comments responding. And these 20 yellow games right here are my best attempt at synthesizing all all of your best suggestions. And then these five down here are five grails that I honestly don't think that we're gonna see, let alone be able to buy, but I just, I threw them on there anyway. So when I said that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is on my list, it's on my list of games that I need to get, which I will show you guys later. What I meant is that now I'll be able to do this. Oh my gosh, that was every bit as satisfying as I'd hoped. Now, if you guys remember from earlier, in this challenge, we're actually going for 100 games in total. That is so bright. Which, aside from the green and the yellow games, leaves 60 slots for games that randomly happen to catch my eye, such as this one. Monsters Inc. And there you have it, folks, the first two games of the PlayStation project. Now, I promised I would tell you guys about the second money-making method I'm gonna use in this series, and for that, I've come to McDonald's parking lot. A lot of you guys probably remember the last collecting series that I did called the GameCube Gambit. When I finished that series, I ended up with a bunch of games that were in the collection, but I didn't really care that much about, and I really wanted to do something special with them. So in honor of the GameCube Gambit, I created the Mystery GameCube Box to help us out with our budgetary needs. So what I'm gonna do is draw a random game out of this box and use this McDonald's Wi-Fi and this video sponsor Whatnot to sell that game to someone who randomly pops into the Whatnot auction in the next five minutes. And today's game is... Cabela's Dangerous Hunts 2. Oh, definitely not the best one, but it is at least complete, so we'll see. All right, so I've pulled it up and I'm ready to get the auction started. The way that Whatnot works is the only people who will be able to buy this, it's going to be a live auction for just 30 seconds. So whoever happens to hop in here in the next minute or so, they'll be the only ones that get a chance to buy this. We've got a complete Cabela's Dangerous Hunts 2. I'm literally in a McDonald's parking lot on their Wi-Fi right now. Noah L. Smalley, congratulations on that win. Really appreciate you, man. All right, folks, so $21 we got in the course of like two minutes for this game. I just looked it up. Normally, it only goes for around 16. The community on Whatnot is very generous and supportive. I think some of them might have caught wind of what we're doing. I don't want to make this challenge any easier on myself, so I'm only going to count $16 towards our PlayStation budget, leaving us at $140. The other five, I'm I'm gonna put towards a different budget for giveaways, which I'll talk about later. And with that, let's head into our second stop game exchange to see if we can find more stuff to flip and more PlayStation games. All right, so I'm doing my thing, looking for like underpriced stuff around here that I could potentially flip. They're always super cool and accommodating here at this location. The first thing that I found here is this Toy Story 2 on the N64 has a really nice sticker label. Looks like I should be able to do really well with it on Amazon. 50 is a little bit ambitious, but I would say I should be able to at least double up. Ooh, here's a good one as well. Shadow the Hedgehog for 19. It is complete, so I'll be able to get at least $13 profit for that after fees. Ooh, collections almost always go for too much on Amazon. Yep, look at that, 13 into 28. So one thing that I haven't really told you guys yet is that this whole seven day series is leading up to the Southeast Game Exchange video game convention this weekend. And that every episode after this one is actually going to be on the road. This is the only one in my hometown. Dang, check that out folks, $20 into 41 after fees. So when you factor in the expected profit for all these games, that puts our total PlayStation budget at $204, which is more than enough to start going to town on this low dollar PlayStation section. So here's the thing, if I want to get to a 100 game collection by the end of the seven days, I have to buy an average of 14, just over 14 games per day. Which when I did the math was honestly a little bit more than I was expecting, so I'm definitely gonna be going hard on these cheaper game sections. Oh, Spyro, that's a game that's on my list. Oh, crap, not gonna mess with that. Oh, Tomb Raider though, that's one that a lot of people suggested. Ooh, Rampage World Tour, ah, 15 bucks. I think for the games that aren't on my list, I'm gonna try to stick under 10 when I can. Namco Museum is interesting. Oh, perfect. Oh, also they have volume three. Let's take a look at that. Oh, $10 as well. What do you guys think? Which one should I be picking? 
Ooh, Arcade Greatest Hits Atari Collection, seven bucks? That seems like an awesome deal. I'm happy about that one. A complete tank game for five? <laughs> they made an M&M's PlayStation 1 game? I had no idea. Looks like it's a 3D platformer. That is 100% buy for me at seven bucks. Motocross, okay. $3 for a complete black label PlayStation 1 game. Are you serious? Ooh, this is another one right here. Arcade Greatest Hits for $8. I'm almost sure I actually had this one as a kid. I don't think I played it all that much, but for goodness sake, you can't be $8. All right, any last PlayStation games that I need before? Oh, Spyro Year of the Dragon. Folks, when I tell you that I spent so many hours on this game as a kid, a Spyro game was top of my list that I needed to get back in this collection. But the question is, does it actually have a manual? Come on, baby, please. Yes. Yeah. Spyro. Folks, a day one Spyro Year of the Dragon complete for 15 is absolutely huge. So folks, these first eight games, since we were fairly thrifty with our choices, are only going to cost 70 bucks, leaving us 134 to take up to the glass case and see if we can find any other more expensive titles that are also on our list. All right, folks, we have arrived. Looks like they actually have a really solid selection here of higher dollar titles. A decent number of them are complete. Ooh, they got Tekken back there. They've got a couple Twisted Metals and Chrono Cross and Final Fantasy, all kinds of good stuff. I'm gonna see if they can pull out some of the more high potential stuff so we can take a closer look. All right, Final Fantasy Tactics. I think we're looking for seven and eight, but not this one. Builder's Block, interesting. But this is what I'm most interested in. Chrono Cross, wow, complete with both discs. That's fantastic. Oh, we got Twisted Metal, couple copies of it. Oh, looks like one is 29, the other's 49. So that's an easy choice. Tekken for some reason at 40 seems a little bit high, so I might pass on that. And then Monster Ranch is just super beat up. But both Twisted Metal and Chrono Cross are games that you guys suggested to put on my list, so I'd be super stoked to come home with these as well. Folks, I can't believe it, but coming out of Game Exchange, it ended up being an even better deal than I thought. Let me find a nice spot and fill you guys in. That was a good shot, really good shot. I knew that these not so sticky, sticky notes were gonna be a problem. That's called problem solving, kids. All right. Update time. So first of all, you guys remember when I said I had $5 extra to spend on giveaway stuff? Well, I ended up spending that $5 and quite a good amount more on these five games. But as for the PlayStation games we picked up at our second and last stop of the day, it ended up being a killer last stop. I honestly was going to do three stops today, but that last one took so long and they had so much good stuff, I decided to keep it to two, but normally we'll be doing much more stops in a day. We somehow paid three bucks for Motocross Mania, eight for Williams Arcade Greatest Hit, Hits, seven for Midway's Greatest Hits, five for Grudge Warriors, seven for Eminem's Shell Shocked, which he ended up recasing for me, 10 for, Namco, 10 for Namco Museum, and then we got four games out of the 30 that are on our list, not including the Grails, which we probably won't be able to get. Twisted Metal for 30, even though it's stickered at 50, he gave me the nicer one at the lower price, which was super nice. Chrono Cross for 30, which a ton of you guys recommended, and I'm really excited to try out. Tomb Raider for 15, which is another one of the most recommended games of the entire higher comment section. And finally, Spyro Year of the Dragon. This one was on my personal nostalgia list because oh my gosh, folks, everything from the music to the character design to the sound effects of this game just absolutely take me back to a simpler time of life. All this brings us to a total of 12 games for the first day of this challenge, which puts us a little bit behind schedule game-wise, but we're also carrying over $86 in our PlayStation fund for tomorrow. I thought it was only going to be like 74, but some of them ended up having actually gone down in price in Game Exchange's system. And Caleb, the guy checking me out, ended up honoring the lower price, which was super awesome. So $86 without even doing anything to spend tomorrow when we're on the road. Now, I know what you guys are thinking at this moment. Caleb, this series is so cool. It's such a good idea. I just, 
I think that because we're not gonna be back at home base every time, it's not gonna be quite as satisfying because we're not gonna get the scenes of the games going back on the shelf. Oh, Caleb, I just wish you hadn't attached this GoPro to a super frail branch that's literally blowing every which way in the wind. Well, guess who has solutions to not one, but every single one of those problems, folks? Boom, mobile shelving unit, let's go. So folks, for the first time in this series, let's get these games on the shelf and on the list. That's gonna be a problem. Oh, and one last little thing before I let you guys go. This entire series is being filmed over the course of seven actual days. This is the PlayStation Project. Can I take a look at this uh, DS Lite down here? Does it have a charger and everything? It is. Okay, cool. You get 30 days. Oh, there we go. Would y'all do 40 on it, you think? Uh, plus the tax, 42, okay. 40. Let's go ahead and do that, thank you. Absolutely. Oh man, folks, I definitely thought that was going to be a strikeout looking at their game. So glad I checked the glass case. The way that I'm building my budget in this series and not paying anything out of pocket for the collection is finding stuff like this DS to flip and only using the expected profit as my PlayStation budget. So for example, they wanted 50 bucks for this really nice condition DS and Donkey Kong game. I negotiated and only ended up paying 42 after tax. The DS itself should go for 58 after fees on Amazon and then the game should be an extra 20. Which brings our PlayStation budget for the day up to $122, an excellent start. Folks, stop number two is Berea Pawn Shop. I don't know about you guys, but to me, that font is one that just deserves to be spoken in a weird accent. Berea Pawn Shop, Pawn Shop, Berea Pawn Shop. Ooh, we have games. We've got PlayStation 2. Ooh, a Wii U game. No PlayStation though. Ooh, hello, free workout. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> I uh worked out to I worked out today already, so. Don't really, don't really need to. Well, struck out there, unfortunately, which makes this actually a pretty good time to introduce our second money-making method. Selling drugs. Good morning, can I help you? Hey there, uh, can I get a Mick Money? What was that? Can I get a Mick Money? Uh, you said Mick Money? Yeah. Okay, um, it, they're only app. App only? I'll, I'll just go for some fries then. All right, folks, so we're here in the McDonald's parking lot, shamelessly leeching off their Wi-Fi to hold our second ever random GameCube whatnot auction. The first thing we're gonna do is select not one, but two today games from the Mystery GameCube box to sell off to build our collection budget because selling off games from the current collection is a way of gaining money without spending anything out of pocket for PlayStation games. All right, game number one is... Avatar Last Airbender, and number two... Ooh, Bomberman Generation. I <laughs> should probably take the price tag off of there. So you've got two GameCube games coming at you guys. I'm sweating up a storm. We're here in the McDonald's parking lot. Avatar The Last Airbender, and you have won this game. Congratulations, Bomberman Generation, no manual. Yeri is taking it. Definitely just realized that that guy was listening to me do that auction the entire time. <laughs> Windows down and everything. All right, folks, so 27 and $33 we got for these, which is right around what the lowest copies were going for via FBA on Amazon. After fees, that gives us about 50 
$68 more PlayStation budget to work with, which puts us at a total of $180. So I say right now, let's get over to a local flea market that's more likely to actually have original PlayStation games. I have a feeling that today is definitely going to be the biggest wild card day of the whole seven days. Because for the next three days, I at least have a tentative plan of certain stores to go to or people to meet up with, which, spoiler alert, some of you guys will recognize. By the way, we are quickly approaching Sean's flea market right now, our next stop. But today, you guys can probably tell I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, so fingers crossed we're able to find something cool. Okay, so update, this place is way bigger on the inside than on the outside. And they have a freaking Pokemon card claw machine. And we also have our first sign of video games. We got Michael Jackson, ooh, Connect Sports. This one actually does okay on Amazon, like maybe six bucks after fees or so. So if this is like a buck or two, I would actually pick it up. Shoot. Oh, but look at this. In this booth, 50% off everything. All right, so this is the booth that she was telling us about that had a ton of games she was mentioning to me up front. And I'm not gonna say that she oversold it, but I don't know. I mean, we, we've got a couple of shelves worth. I can't really complain. Doesn't look like anything too crazy. And most importantly, I can't find any original PlayStation ones. So that's a little bit disappointing, but that's not to say that we can't find something to flip on these shelves. Looks like we got some PSP action down here, although it's mostly like sports stuff. So that's not super thrilling. Ooh, hold up though. We do have a sealed title here. And you guys might say it's Rec Room Games. This is Wii Shovelware. It's not worth anything. But I don't know, at five bucks, this kind of stuff actually can do well on Amazon, so let's see. Would you look at that, $22? I'm not gonna say I told you so, folks. Really, the only other games of interest in that booth was some Wii U stuff, but it was all priced pretty much at market value, so right now, this is all we're coming away with. Now, while that does bring our PlayStation budget up to $197, I am starting to get itchy for PlayStation games. And also on my bum a little bit from driving so much, but that's not, that's neither here nor there. All right, folks, at long last, Game King, here we come. Let's spend some of this $197, shall we? It's burning a hole in my pocket. All right, folks, so even taking a quick look in their high-end case down here, they've got some really killer PS1 titles. There's Clock Tower back there, Mega Man X5. We got Street Fighter EX. Unfortunately, none of those are the ones on our list. And right now, for non-list games, we have a pretty limited budget. We're trying to keep those super cheap. Huh. Only at GameStop. Apparently not. This over here is more the section that we're going to be looking at. A little bit lower dollar stuff. I'm not seeing anything immediately that sticks out at me that is on our list. Looking for some titles like A Crash Game or 101 Dalmatians or Tigger's Honey Hunt or Final Fantasy VII. But one thing that did definitely catch my eye was this down here. Phantom Menace for $19. I do love a good Star Wars game and this one, it's in really nice shape so that's very tempting. Ultimately, when it comes down to it for me, I think I'm going to try to stick with under $10 games for anything that's not on my personal nostalgia list or the viewer suggestion list. Unfortunately, it does look like our options in that price range are fairly limited, but Cool Borders 3 looks kinda sweet, I'm not gonna lie. Also, I saw one down here, what was it? Oh yeah, Snow Cross. Also at $10 and complete in black label. I think I'm gonna have to pull the trigger. Well folks, it decided to start raining on us pretty good, so unfortunately I can't do this recap in the trunk, but we did come away with not only two $10 games for the collection, but they gave me a discount of $10 dollars each on these three copies of Sonic Battle, bringing them to $30 a piece. And I've sold these bad boys consistently for $60 a piece on Amazon, which is around 48 after fees. So these games will literally more than pay for the $10 PS1 games that we just got. Plus, if you guys didn't know, on the last night of when this series comes out, we're going to have a massive whatnot giveaway auction. So I picked out both Star Wars Phantom Menace and Bomberman to go into our whatnot giveaway bag, independent of the challenge budget. Oh, no problem. No problem. Well, folks, um, I'm not gonna lie. The pawn, sh the selection in this pawn shop was absolutely amazing, and yet it it was not it was not a good stop. Okay, so it just started absolutely monsooning outside. I had to take shelter in this self-service car wash. But let me fill you guys in on what just happened. 
I should preface this by saying that I am a very firm believer in businesses operating the way that they want to. Some people sometimes assume the way that I talk on this channel that I think I'm entitled to go into a place and buy stuff for under market value and make my YouTube videos. That's not the case at all. So when I walked in the door and he said, uh, sorry, so you're not allowed to film in here. I said, God bless you. No problem at all. You should run your business the way that you want. Oh, no problem. Which was, to be honest, a little bit of a shame because I'm gonna have Editor Riff pull up some pictures from Google Images here. They had video games literally floor to ceiling and wall to wall. It was like half pawn shop, half video game store. So naturally I see this and I start asking some questions about like other inventory they might have and pricing and they let me know that the stuff behind the counter mostly hasn't been priced and that they pretty much look everything up and go a dollar under eBay. I'm like, not my favorite thing, but you know, whatever. But they tell me that the stuff in the shelves at the front of the store, the lower dollar games, they're already priced and those prices will pretty much stand. So I got kind of excited when I found a copy of Family Guy on the PS2 and Matrix Path of Neo out there, both for five bucks. And they're both like 20 plus dollar games. And they were pretty scratched up. So I waited a while for them to buff them for me, which was nice. It was probably like 15 minutes. And the man came back to me and said, all right, this one will be $5 and this one will be 10. And I was like, hold on a second. I thought you said that the stuff that was out on the shelves, those prices would stand. And he said, Yes, they do, but this one here I saw you get from behind the counter when you were looking at the behind the counter games. And so I said, oh no, this, this was just a mistake. I actually had grabbed that one from the front shelf ahead of time and I brought it with me and had it in my hand as I was looking at the stuff behind the counter with the games that hadn't been priced yet. And he looked at me in my eyes and said, no, you didn't. This was behind the counter. And I said, no, no, I think this is just a misunderstanding. Like, believe me, I'm very certain this was the first game that I touched when I came in the door. This one was priced at $5 and I was excited about it. We talked about Family Guy and how it's a good show. I'm very certain that I got this from the front counter. And he stared right into my eyes and said, no, you didn't. And folks, I'll be honest, at that point, I was kind of speechless. I had never been treated that way before in a pawn shop. And I want to, like, I'm trying to be empathetic. I know they probably have people in there all the time that are trying to get one over on them and they have to be leery and be cautious of people trying to take advantage of them. But to just outright be called a liar as you're trying to, like, support a local business, it just, it just felt it just felt wrong, I don't know. So at that point, I just had to say thanks, I think I'm gonna pass, walked out the door, and now here we are. You guys can let me know if I'm being irrational or whiny in the comments. I just felt kinda icky about the whole situation. Hey, look folks, over the course of this conversation, the rain stopped. So anyways, we're at $208 right now in the PlayStation Fun. Just pulled up to this other pawn shop top dollar. I'm pretty sure this one isn't the one with the big selection just looking at it, but we're gonna take a look anyway. Well, folks, still no PlayStation games, but the budget does continue to grow. These games are worth about 12 bucks a piece after fees, and we paid a total of seven. So, folks, we now have $225 to spend on PlayStation games, and the good news is I'm fairly sure that Shylock's Pawn right here is the place that actually has a really good selection. Let's cross our fingers. I walked into Shylock's Pawn Shop and my mind was blown again. It, it absolutely was the pawn shop that I had in mind. And not only did they have a great selection of a whole bunch of different consoles, but they had a small stack of PlayStation games. And right on top, well, not of the main stack, but on the next shelf down was both Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. I could not believe it. The other low dollar titles were priced fairly modestly and he ended up giving me a discount at the end. Folks, I could not be happier. At the selection at this store. Holy cow, folks, that experience was like the polar opposite of the last stop. Let me fill you guys in on what I got. And here are the results, folks. We got one, two, three games that will be about $10 profit a piece on Amazon, plus not one, but two Final Fantasy games. Earlier today, I said I wanted to find a Final Fantasy game. And these bad boys are both in minty condition. It's amazing. I mean, look at this. Just, oh, oh. Is anybody else hiring? Seriously, this is enough to make you, oh! Ooh, 
Ooh. The only downside is I definitely did overpay for them. Normally these are each like 20 bucks a piece, but because of the condition, he didn't want to come down off of his price of $35 each. Which, you know, is it the best financial decision of the challenge? No, but I think it probably is the worst. The bad news is we are over 50 miles away from the next closest non-GameStop video game store, which means that this is going to have to be our last stop of the day. And it also means we're slipping farther behind on our 14 games per day quota if we want to hit 100 games by the end of the week. But nonetheless, we are gonna hold our heads up high and hope for the best as we get these games on the shelf. I honestly, I need to think of a cooler term for that. Folks, truth be told, at this point, as I looked at my largely incomplete PlayStation list and my mostly empty rack of games and all the games that I still really wanted to collect in this challenge, I started to feel a little disappointed. I kept thinking of that less than ideal pawn shop interaction and how tomorrow if I wanted to get back on track, I'd have to buy 24 PlayStation games. And I seriously wondered whether trying to do 100 games in a week was just too ambitious in the first place. It it kind of feels silly, honestly, to be sad in any capacity, given that I'm literally like out hunting for video games. I think where it comes from is that the reason I make these videos is to try to show people that opportunity is everywhere. Whether you're trying to build a collection for cheap or you're trying to make some side income to pay off debt or take your family on vacation, like there really is opportunity all over the place to buy stuff cheap and sell it for higher online. And I think when I have days like this, it kind of makes me feel, especially if I'm making a video about it, like I'm not doing that great of a job, but not all hope is lost. Because we were able to build up a rolling PlayStation budget of $185 today that will carry into tomorrow. What's more, tomorrow's going to be a much more video game store heavy day, so I think we'll have much higher chances of finding good PlayStation games. And on top of all of that, the Climax store tomorrow is owned by a friend of mine, so I think we have really good chances of getting some solid deals there. And ultimately, folks, if I have nothing but six game days for the rest of this challenge, I'll just set a more reasonable goal next time. Oh geez, is it PlayStation Project time already? I gotta get moving. I just, I just put those there by the way. I mean, can you imagine how weird it would be if someone actually slept with their games? I'm on a mission to collect 100 PlayStation games in just seven days. And to be honest, it's off to a bit of a slow start. It's day three of the challenge, and this is the list of the games that we have in the collection so far. And if I want to get back on pace to finish this challenge in the next four days, I have to buy 24 PlayStation games in one day. The best we've done up until this point is 12. Folks, this is the PlayStation Project. But here's the problem. My wife Erica and I are saving up for a house right now, and as it turns out, houses are more expensive than PlayStation games. So I'm trying to build this entire collection with no money out of pocket. I've got a $185 budget that carried over from yesterday, and now I'm heading into this pawn shop to see if we can make some more. Okay, so that was kind of unexpected and weird. Almost every PlayStation 4 game in that store was priced basically at market value, except this one, Fate Stella Umbral Star, was only eight bucks, and I'll be able to get 28 for it after fees on Amazon. And that $20 profit is going to go into our overall PlayStation budget for the day, bringing it up to $205. Good morning, welcome to McDonald's. Will you be using the mobile app today? Could I get a, um, 
couple make playstations folks here we are again in the mcdonald's parking lot with our mystery, mystery game cube box. box leeching off of their free wi-fi to do a live auction to build our playstation budget just a little bit more shout out to the least exciting games from the gamecube gambit for supplying this inventory game number one is odama on the gamecube looks like it is complete game number two oh lost kingdoms 2 this one we paid 154 dollars for i'm optimistic that this will be very helpful in pushing our budget as far as it can possibly go for the day and you know what because yesterday was a little rough i'm actually gonna pull a third one. Ooh, rocket power beach bandits Ooh, who's that handsome fella this is my auction right here there's my preview running i already went ahead and listed the three games let's see how this pans out gonna start out with a sweet complete odama game today getting this started jester's thrift thanks so much for that purchase 25 dollars. really appreciate you up next rocket power beach bandits andrew congratulations on that win really appreciate that folks the last one of the day lost kingdoms to fold up mission at 144 dollars for anyone who's still here say hi to youtube what's going on <laughs> they're all saying hi we're coming away with an extra 236 dollars for the playstation fund now folks i don't know about you but i'm about ready to take my 441 dollars and buy some playstation games which is why i'm here at two dudes games Gaming, and I have a very good feeling that their selection is gonna be top-notch. All right, folks, so I'm here with Justin, Will, and Jerry from Two Dudes Gaming. I guess we have four dudes in here at this point. I was just telling them earlier about the PlayStation project that I'm working on, and I'm realizing right now, I think it would be a little bit easier to show you guys rather than tell you, so I'll be right back. What I'm about to show you is a sight for sore eyes. I think we have reached video game PlayStation 1 Mecca. Look at this. Oh, I can't even, I can't. They're all, they've got their cases. They're in nice shape. I just, I can't even believe the selection here. I'm gonna start digging into these and just let you guys know what's catching my eye. Oh man, first game, Disney's Atlantis. This is definitely one I'd be interested in, but the number one priority has to be games on the list. Ooh, getting a crash game definitely is on the list for me. Crash Team Racing wouldn't be my first choice, so I'm gonna see if they have any other ones. Ooh, another Disney one. Ooh, Tomb Raider 3, but I'm pretty sure we already have a Tomb Raider game. Checked off the list, so I'll leave this one behind as well. <gasps> Yes, 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 yes. I cannot tell you guys the number of memories I have playing this game for $15 Black Label Complete Crash Bash. I could not be more thrilled about this game. Oh, oh my gosh. Folks, I am embarrassed to say this, but this is a game that I played a ton in my childhood that I totally forgot to add to my nostalgia list. It's a fantastic Mega Man collection game that honestly, as a kid, I don't think I was skilled enough to beat most of these levels, but I loved it anyway. Ooh, and also right beneath it, we've got GTA 2 and GTA London. You guys are going to make fun of me, but I have never played a GTA game, so I knew I wanted to get one of them in this collection. Ooh. I'm gonna go with two because it's a little more classic. Look, and right underneath those, Spider-Man. I'm almost sure this one is on the list too. It's another one, folks. It's another one. Metal Gear Solid for 40 bucks complete. A ton of you guys recommended this one for the collection. When I owned a PS1, I was too young to play this, but I was seriously so excited about adding this one. Folks, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, look at this. Grand Theft Auto Original. Definitely am gonna prefer this one to the sequel, even though it's the collector's edition. Also, it's $5 cheaper, which is gonna make a huge difference because I can already tell we're not going to have enough cash to buy everything that we need from this store. Oh, and there it is, folks. Didn't I just say, didn't I just say, say Gran Turismo earlier, and this copy is $10. There's another one, Croc Legend of Gobos, also 15 bucks. Oh, and look at this, Pac-Man 20th anniversary. Yeah. Oh, you ugly, just kidding. Oh, but hold up, another one. Hey, Jedi Power Battles. Oh, that's so nostalgic. I used to play this game all 
all the time with my dad and we could not get past this like one level deep into the game. I actually went back and played it not too long ago. Turns out the game is super janky. <laughs> At the time, I was convinced I was just a terrible gamer. Now I realize there was, there was a decent bit of wonkiness in this game. This is another one people suggested a ton, Odd World. Never played this franchise before, but apparently it's good. Well, Justin, I found quite the stack of low-dollar PS1 games. I'm not sure how much more I can afford than this. I haven't added them all up, but I am kind of curious. Either way, what kind of stuff you might have in this case down here. Wow. All right, folks, so here are the other games that Justin pulled out of the high-dollar stack that we know are on our list. Oh, my gosh, Grandia, $90. This is the most expensive non-grail game that I actually have on my list. As I was doing the research for this series, I picked a couple Grandia songs for the intro and outro of these oh, videos because okay. the soundtrack is incredible so I don't this one's gonna have to be a serious contender I may even have to put back some of the lower dollar ones if I don't have the budget because this this is a special game Resident Evil 2 for some reason was recommended much more than the original Resident Evil at 40 bucks though that's a pretty solid uh, deal on that one and then finally folks our first grail game find Castlevania Symphony of the Night this is just one of those games that most people will Will often have on their top 10 PlayStation games who've played a lot of games on it. Definitely a special one. Not, I, I don't know if I could prioritize it though over getting like, you know, 10 lower dollar games. Here are all the games laid out that I have picked out. Every single one, actually, except for the Mega Man, is on this list down here. I would love to move it over to this list over here, but I haven't added it up yet to see what the damage is and how much exactly we have to put back. So let's do that now. All right, Jerry, hit me with the total of both stacks. Total value we have here is $499.36. $499, that's actually a lot closer than I expected, folks. We might be able to get away with only putting away like one or two of these. That's a, that's very <laughs> exciting. So this is 490 something dollars worth of stuff here. We've got 441 to spend. With all the times you've helped and hanging out, how about we just, let's just call it four. $400? dollars are you, are you really sure about that? That would be like, that would actually be under. I would still have some money to spend. And we talked about maybe another section of the store that might have some other stuff. Wow, I, I can't tell you guys how grateful I am for that. Thank you so much. Folks, 13 games from the actual list in one store. Actually, one of them's not from the list. This one should have been on the list and it wasn't. I just, I my mind is absolutely blown and we've still got 41 to spend. All right, folks, so I'm here still with Justin, yeah. but now not in the same room. He actually took me back to his warehouse space, and guess what? There's more PlayStation stuff back here. So I'm gonna go through this here and see if I can find 40 more dollars worth of stuff, either here or back at the other place, because I, I did not expect having a surplus of funds to spend here. All right, so I looked through these ones. I didn't find any that uh, we don't have already. There was a siphon filter there he was mentioning. Yeah, actually, ATV. This is one that I played on the PS2 uh, that actually was a pretty good time. I may consider that one. Ooh, Destruction Derby 2. This is one that people mentioned in the comments, but I couldn't fit it onto the 20 game list. Is Does that one run very expensive? Uh, it might be like 10 bucks or Okay. Uh, what about the Jet Motos? Bucks each on them too. Let's go for the original there. That looks nice. The thing I was telling Justin earlier is at this point, I'm also definitely in the market for lower dollar games to get us closer to that 100 game mark at the end of the set. Days. So we found 20 more dollars worth of games in the warehouse. We have 21 left in the budget and I'd really like to spend it here because they cut us such a great deal. Really looking for cheap games to get our numbers up as much as possible, like maybe Pong, five bucks, perfect. Maybe Rainbow Six, another five bucks. Activision Classics, perfect. I love collection games. GTA, no. Theme Park is 10. Lucky Luke. Huh, Editor Riff? Is that you? How dare you? Ooh, Marble Master is $5. Nah, close enough. Well, folks, $417 later. They gave me an additional discount on the other stuff, even though I said they didn't have to, they just did. If you're ever in the Elizabethton 
Tennessee area. I had to make sure I got that right. Definitely check out Two Dudes Gaming. This has been an amazing experience. We like to say we're the best video game store in the East. So far East, you come back here. Two Dudes Gaming. <laughs> Folks, Two Dudes Gaming, oh my gosh, has single-handedly turned the trajectory of this series around and I didn't even show you guys everything I got because I also went a little bit crazy and spent over $200 on these 11 PlayStation games. Well folks because of the generosity of the folks down at Two Dudes Gaming we still have $22 to spend left in our PlayStation fund so I've come out to Orbit's video game store in Asheville to see if we can possibly find four more games to achieve our goal for the day. Honestly it's kind of a win either way but let's see what we can find. Holy cow, folks, look at this. They have not one, not two, but three of our Grail games all in this one glass case here. This is insane. But that said, there's nothing to stop us from building up more of a budget if we can find stuff to flip in here. Nothing that is except bad Wi-Fi. Ooh, this one though, I know off the top of my head, will be like 10 bucks in profit. I really feel like with all these brand new Amiibos, there could be some really good opportunity there as well. Like this three pack here for $60, I'm almost sure that's underpriced. Worst case, I could sell them individually and at least make my money back. Same thing with this set up here, actually, believe it or not. I'm almost sure after fees brand new, that's like a $200 set. I'm not gonna factor it into the total at this point because I don't know for sure, but I am gonna buy it and we'll figure it out later. Also, I feel like a lot of their guides, like this one's super cool. A lot of them have been priced at a flat 10 a piece. So maybe there are some here that could be worth more. Like Nintendo Power, probably not that one. Oh, no way. Also $10, that's amazing. Does it have the poster though? <gasps> it does. Again, can't look it up, but I have a really good feeling about this. Ooh, there's another GameCube one. I'm not as optimistic about that. I don't think people care too much about it. Oh, no way. Another 10 bucks for Emerald? Does it have the poster though? I don't think this one does, so I may pass on that. So folks, including the Crash game, we've now got 34 bucks in the budget. Let's see how many five to $10 games we can find here and maybe get up to that 24 mark for the day. The first one I spotted here was Casper. Got the manual and everything. Ooh, 10 bucks, not bad. Don't have an Army Men game yet. Ooh, very nice. Asteroids as well. Hey, there we go. Ooh, look, Tekken 2 and 3 are both on our list. Let's see. Oh, 12 bucks. That's honestly so close. I might just put one of these $10 ones back and swap it out for a five. Sorry, army men, maybe another day. Do Hydro Cross? Hey, perfect price. Well, folks, thanks to Orbit's video games, we're finishing the day out with 24 PlayStation games added to the collection, officially back on track for the PlayStation project with $1 left in our PlayStation bank account. But we still need to look up all the stuff that I bought there because if I was right, if my instincts were correct, we could actually start out tomorrow with some money in our fund. These were all the wild card items I bought. Let's see how they do. All right, so Link Amiibo was 40 bucks. Yes, 63 after fees. Hi. Okay, this just got a little bit awkward. I'm gonna move. <laughs> like, don't mind me, sir. Just making a random YouTube video in your neighborhood. Croc 2 I just got because I saw that it was 25 bucks and it was 50 back at two dudes, so I had a good feeling. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, 41 after fees. $51 profit. Okay, this one was a bit of a miss. We're breaking even on that. Plus 68 plus $38 profit, leaving us with a total profit from this stop of $196. Oh, plus the $1 we had left over. <sighs> well, folks, it's a couple hours later. I'm still sitting in my trunk, but I'm now in the parking lot of a shopping mall waiting to get some ice cream with tomorrow's special guest who I think a lot of you will be very excited for. And as I sit here looking through this huge box of PlayStation games, I just can't help but think of what an absolute 180 this day has been from yesterday. 
I mean, for goodness sake, we went from six games to 24 games in one day. I'm just feeling so happy, super blessed. I'm especially stoked that we got two incredibly nostalgic games for me in Pac-Man and Crash. The single most expensive viewer suggested game, which has supplied so much of the music for this series. And even, dare I say, one of our fabled grail games. I just, I, I am over the moon. But folks, without further ado, let's tuck these puppies into bed for the for the night. No, that that doesn't work either. Holy cow, folks, what an absolutely stellar day of game hunting. I have a feeling day four is going to be just as amazing, but it's like 11 o'clock, I've gotta to get to bed. I woke up on day four of trying to build a 100 game PlayStation collection in one week feeling unstoppable. Not only had I knocked a ton of games off the list the previous day, but I ended the day with $197 in my PlayStation game budget. And what I'm even more excited for today is I'm gonna be joined by easily the worst reseller on YouTube. And there he is, folks. Is Best reseller on YouTube. Ah! I have no doubt I think that <laughs> Harry Tornado is here with me today. I think you guys reselling prowess is going to be very very helpful today. Before we leave and film your video, which by the way, if you guys want to see that, check out his channel. You want to see where my progress is on the PlayStation Absolutely. project? So these are the games that we have so far. Yeah, on our on our little mobile shelf. And what's more, I have my arts and crafts project. Those are the games we have. These are the games that we need today. And he's going to take us to all the best video game stores in Colombia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> all right, let's do this. All right, Josh and Haley, we are here at Software Seconds. I've got 197 PlayStation dollars to spend. Our goal is to find the best games for the cheapest prices. Let's do it. All right. All right, so here are a few games that I know are on my nostalgia list that I don't have yet. Tigger's Honey Hunt, The Smurfs, Disney Magical Racing Tour. So if we can find any of those, I'll be thrilled. I think they are maybe in alphabetical order, so it shouldn't be too hard. All right, looks like, okay, we got 10 tomorrow. Ooh, Tarzan. Well, I'm unfortunately not seeing any Smurfs or Tigger, but Qbert at 10 bucks seems like honestly a pretty solid deal. Ooh, Cubix is a nostalgic one too for five. I might go ahead and do that. Definitely one of the coolest GBA reshells I've seen for sure. Well, Josh, I'm not having any luck with the list games, but can you help me pick out something that is cheap? Cheap. Yeah, yes. that looks fun. We got SpongeBob SquarePants, super sponge. Okay, how much? Is, ooh, 13? Yeah, I'm a SpongeBob man. Dora, 12 dollars I feel like there's gotta be some. Oh, here we go. Die Hard Trilogy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Or Dinosaur. Oh, Dinosaur for sure. You like Dinosaur. I'm a sucker for the Disney games, Dragon yeah. Tales? I'll stick with Dinosaur. dinosaur. I like that one, yeah. Okay. So, folks, we spent $25 on three pretty nostalgic titles here. I'm honestly pretty happy with that result, even though we weren't able to find any of our list games. Here's a quick refresher for you guys on the titles that I'm still looking for in this video, if we can find a couple. So, Josh, at this point, we're left with $172 in our fund. I'd say it's about time to make a little bit more, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> so, folks, 
folks, I'm back again in the iconic McDonald's parking lot to bum their Wi-Fi to do our daily whatnot auction of a couple GameCube games to build up our PlayStation fun. And since Josh and Haley are whatnot veterans, we're gonna have them help us out with the auction and let you guys do the honors of picking out the games from the mystery, mystery GameCube, GameCube box. box. All right, here you go. Any game you want, what are we auctioning? That's no pressure, this will determine the trajectory look, right? of the entire series, it. correct. Turok. He's got Turok Evolution. Embarrassingly, I accidentally bought two of those games in the GameCube Gambit, and so uh, this one's going up for auction today. And Haley, what's your mystery gonna be? Ooh, NFL, NFL Street. Street. Okay, that one should have a little bit more value. We'll see how much we end up getting for both. New, new, Look at them, they're doing such live, a great job up there. Live. Okay, so we got Turok. What would the first one sell for? Fill me in. $35. $35 for Turok, that's very generous. Hey, thank you guys all so much and whatnot. This is apparently really, really cool. I know nothing about NFL Street. Thank okay, so, so this one sold for, you said less than Turok. Okay, $33, $33. that's still an excellent price for that game. All right, folks, we're heading in here to our second stop, the games vlog armed with $234, trying to find at least 11 games before the end of the day. All right, folks, so I have spied the PlayStation section right down here. Josh, you know the budget that we have. Uh, I don't. 200 and what? <laughs> it's $234. Well, actually, maybe we shouldn't say it for negotiating. No, just kidding. We've got $234 to spend here. I want you and Haley each just to pick out a game that catches your eye. Okay. And it'll be in the collection forever. Or until you sell it. SpongeBob. That's the same game that we. Oh, and that's way cheaper than the last yeah, store this was too. Six dollars. The other <laughs> store was what twelve ninety nine. Yeah, I think it was thirteen. That's crazy. Okay, how much? It, oof, thirteen. Yeah. I think that's that it. That might be meant to be. Meant to be. Yeah. Haley, you're up. I don't even know. You could take Josh's advice and just go for the first green one that you Crazy see. <laughs> I'll let you know if I already see, have I it. Let's see, what'd you find here? Medal, Medal of Honor Bob. Underground. Okay, yeah. oh, and $8 too. That's black label, That that's a great- That one looks cool. Okay, yeah, let's go for that. That's yeah. a good selection. And you guys know the other thing I'm always looking for is those random items that do better for me on Amazon than they normally would in store that'll have a little bit of room to build our budget by flipping them. For example, I know this Game Shark Pro priced at $26, I've sold for 60 on Amazon before, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Right now, I'm not seeing anything else in this section that I have on my list of either nostalgic games or games that you guys recommended for me from this section, but anytime I can find something that looks somewhat fun that's a good deal, I'm gonna pull the trigger. For example, 10 Pin Alley, for some reason, I've considered getting a couple times. I don't know why, I just like the idea of a PlayStation bowling game, so I think I'm gonna get it for eight bucks. Escape or die trying? How can I not? Ooh, you guys remember yesterday when we put an Army Men game back? Let's see. Oh, nine bucks. That's perfect. With the Italian job, another little racing game, maybe five bucks. That seems like a solid deal. Oh, folks, there's another little gem there that you know we've bought before, a Game Boy Color Game Shark. I guess today is just a Game Shark day on the flip side. So here's the higher dollar PS1 section here, folks, which has definitely caught my eye. They've got a couple gems in here that we've gotten in the collection already. Spyro, Tekken, Castlevania, believe it or not, Final Fantasy, so some excellent selection. I'm not so far seeing anything in here. Ooh. That one's interesting. Akui the Heartless, I don't think I've seen yet. That actually, or no, Akuji. I've never heard of that game, but I'm kind of interested. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, I'm not I'm not seeing anything that we need from our list, but I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about that Akuji. I'm, I don't know, I'm on the fence. This is definitely has some potential. Do you guys know if this has like the dongles and everything in it? It does. Do you guys, do you know if you have a copy of the game that I could maybe buy and put in with it? Looks like this one's actually unused. Y'all don't have um, like any batteries I could throw in here, do you, instead of the corroded ones? Yeah. Okay, yeah, if y'all wanted to do that, I think I think I would go ahead and do this. All right, folks, so I made the last minute judgment call to pass up on the more expensive games in favor of getting us a couple more lower dollar games to fill out our numbers, because remember, we're trying to get to 100 by day seven. I got uh, Daredevil Derby 3D, because I thought for five bucks, that sounded like a steal, and Creatures, because I thought this, this little guy looked like a cursed baby. So <laughs> I figured he just, he called to me, what can I say? All right, folks, quick little backseat recap here. We got not one, not two, but eight PlayStation 1, low dollar PlayStation 1 games. In addition to the three that we got at the first stop, that puts us at 11 games 
for the day, feeling really good about that. We spent a total of, I think it was like 57 or something dollars, but when you factor in the profit that we'll make on both of these Game Sharks and this Guitar Hero Live, granted, I do need to find the actual game to bundle with this, so I'm gonna be looking for that in future stops. We actually, for that stop, when you factor in the profit from these and the expenses on these are positive $16 for the challenge, which puts us at a total PlayStation budget of $250 going into our final store of the day, which is incredible. And folks, our final stop of the day is Scratch and Spin. Josh, what's your prediction? Uh, predicting uh, success. Same. I love the positivity up in here. All right, so I have officially found the video game section in the store, but the problem is I'm not seeing right now any PlayStation 1 stuff. There's a bunch of PS3, PS2, but where could the PS1 be? All right, we have arrived. All right, so they definitely have a not bad selection over here. It's not huge, but I'm curious to see whether they may have any of the gems that I've been looking for. Gosh, look at this. We can't escape this game. Dragon Tales. <laughs> Another one was Rayman. Uh, oh, yeah. 20 bucks, not a bad price. And also this is one that I know was suggested a lot by people, even though I didn't technically like put it on the list because I only had 20 spots. But oh folks, I just saw something. Look at this, Josh. This one right up here. Tigger, this is on the list, it's on the list. Oh no. Oh, that is just, that's, that's so rough. heartbreaking. <laughs> Play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Another series that I definitely recognize is Pitfall here. Ten dollars. Believe it or not, I've never played a Pitfall game. So I think this one should go onto our stack as well. Also spotted this title, Sim Theme Park. Do you think this is like a roller coaster tycoon kind of a game? It seems like kind of similar. And let's be honest, folks, we've got two hundred and fifty dollars today. So let's just let's just go ahead and get. Ooh, Army Men 3D for 15 bucks. Nope, nope, forget about it. Not that rich. Oh, folks, check out that beauty right there, Lunar 2. I'm honestly glad that that's not Lunar 1, which is on our grail list, because uh, spending $200 on a game right now would really stress me out. Oh my gosh, folks. 15 games, 15 games we're putting into the collection today. And even though none of them are specifically from the list of nostalgic games or the ones that you guys supplied me with, the fact that we were able to keep our average buy cost at right around $10 a piece was absolutely monstrous. And folks, doing everything with Josh and Haley just made it all twice as fun. If you have not subscribed to Harry Tornado, definitely go do that. He makes excellent reseller content. I haven't really been asking you guys to like or subscribe to these videos at all along the way. I just don't do that as much anymore. But if you have been enjoying this series at all and wouldn't mind sharing episode one with someone maybe that you played PlayStation with as a kid or that has their own PlayStation collection, that would mean a ton to me. Without further ado, folks, let's get this plastic displayed. It's, it's getting there. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but some of you guys might be even more excited for tomorrow's guest. I woke up on day five of trying to collect 100 PlayStation games in one week, feeling nervous. It was still one day before the huge video game convention that this series has been leading up to, and the last time I tried to game hunt the day before a convention in the convention city did not go well. Cause see, here's the problem. 
Last time I tried this, all the pawn shops were picked over from the people who were gonna go to the convention the next day, and all the video game stores were already packed up to go to the convention. So our mission right now is to see if we can overcome those obstacles and put some money into our PlayStation fund anyway. This is the PlayStation Project. So folks, we've got $200 in the PlayStation budget. The strategy today is going to be to keep our buy costs as low as possible because I know the selection at the convention tomorrow is going to be amazing. First stop is going to be the video game cavern. If only I had a couple people to like help me pick out some games or something. All right, folks, so this has to be easily the sweetest PlayStation display I have seen yet here in Game Cavern. Looks like they've got a pretty decent selection. I'm not really sure what I should really go for. Excuse me, uh, random stranger. Oh, hello. Hey, how's hello. it going? You were Would you mind? I, I'm actually buying some PlayStation games. Okay. Um, you mind giving me some recommendations? Mm -hmm. I have a very limited budget, so what do you think? If you've ever played Forsaken, Forsaken is not a bad game. Oh, it's dang, for 10 bucks? Pretty. Yeah, for sure. I at least um, thought that looked like Kate Winslet. Yeah, you crazy? Hello, Do you other see random Kate stranger. Maybe a little bit. Do you see Kate Winslet on this? And uh, third random stranger in the back as well. I, I could not have foreseen this <laughs> happening today. One thing that I saw was um, Star Wars Demolition. Is like I'm just interested in that. Is it fun? It's very much like uh, Chris, Twisted Metal, but with Star Wars. Because a ton of people recommended Twisted Metal. I don't remember okay. a lot of recommendations. Yeah, for... Twisted Metal. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. very much. It's very much like a Twisted Metal. Well, I'm just a big Star out. Wars guy. So even though this one's yeah. a little bit more pricey, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do this too. Do you think? Do you think they might have any like higher end PlayStation games in the case over? There? I see a glass case. I'm a little, I'm a little bit scared. Oh, oh shoot! You know what I did just see? There's one game in here that is on my list. What is it? It's Toy Story 2, oh. Buzz Lightyear to mm -hmm. the Rescue. I played that as a kid, and it honestly, it I think it holds up fairly well. Really? Yeah, it's it's is surprisingly it good licensed game. Yeah, it is a 3D platformer. It doesn't have a price sticker though, so I'm a little bit curious. It'll cost you money. All right, folks, so here it is. And this, I'm really happy to see that it does have the manual, the artwork and everything. And honestly, 20 bucks on that is cheaper than I was expecting. I feel like I've seen this game before in the t like 20s range. So this is very thrilling. I absolutely, I love this game, people. Wouldn't it be cool to be Buzz Lightyear? Now you can be Buzz in the new Toy Story 2 video game. Use lasers and whirly torso spins to save the day. Not to mention all the insane promo stuff that is just up for display for decoration around this store. This place is super cool. Folks, I have just spotted something that could change the trajectory of this entire day. Take a look at this. Not one, but two of the exact Amiibo sets that we bought not two days ago. You guys know these both do amazing on Amazon for some reason. I don't know why. And they're priced really well. $120 and $130 on this one. This will be an absolute game changer for our PlayStation budget for the rest of the day. Hey, look, guys, I just found an obscure YouTuber. That's what do you think about PlayStation games? Uh, PS1. I actually played my neighbor, had a PS1, so we had Nintendo in my house, PS1 over there, Crash Bandicoot. All right, Spyro. boring. That's enough. So, folks, in Game Cavern, we got four games for $55 which is honestly a fantastic deal, but when you factor in the Amiibos, because like I said before, we'll get $200 a piece for these after fees on Amazon, we're actually positive $95 for this stop in our PlayStation budget. And we're not gonna stop there because as I was talking to the guys in there, they gave me a solid lead on where I could maybe find some more PlayStation games, but between now and then, I'm gonna stop off for our daily auction and get this budget as high as it possibly can go before we do that. Hey there. Uh, could I get a McMr. Krabs? Sounds like a lot of extra work to me. And folks, just like that, here we are again using the free Wi-Fi in the lovely, iconic McDonald's parking lot. About to pick some games out of the mystery, mystery GameCube, GameCube box. box. For our daily whatnot auction to build some PlayStation fun. Animal Crossing on the GameCube complete with the memory card. And it looks like another memory card in there for some reason. Today we're actually going to do something very different with the auction. The second one is... Driven. Also with the manual, nice to see. Yesterday our WhatNot community paid 10 bucks over market value for both of the games that we sold. So today I'm gonna list both of these in our auction and not tell anyone that they're buy it now for about half of market value. So Driven is literally gonna be $4 Animal Crossing. With the extra memory cards, I'm still gonna go like 30 bucks on this. Got a little bit of a surprise for you guys in today's. Oh my gosh, somebody already bought one. What was that? They're already, they're. <laughs> 
They're already both bought. So folks, in an unexpected twist of fate, a couple buyers bought these games before I even had a chance to show them, but they seemed very happy with the results. And this leaves us still after fees with an extra $30 to put in the PlayStation fund. So folks, armed with our now $325 PlayStation budget, we have come to the basement of Pac-Man case, which is the most insane video game basement I have maybe ever been in. And believe it or not, Andy, Pac-Man case, oh. Hi, doggy. You smell like my butthole. Literally today was in the middle of selling off a chunk of games to Retro Rick, and they're gonna let me pick through the PlayStation stuff. So folks, this right here is the collection in question. Andy, what uh, what's the story behind so, how this stuff came to be? Just like most of us, right, that go look for hunting deals, uh, there was a collector that was done with his uh, collection, needed it, uh, needed to sell some of it off. I offered it up, <laughs> snagged it, and then before I even got to look at it, I had a couple people that also wanted to look at this sweet stuff. <laughs> well, he's already, so he's picked out a couple games that he I, needed. I grabbed my favorite stuff already. This is it, this is how collecting works, okay? Yeah. He got what he needed from the collection. Yeah. I picked out things, and now he is picking out things. Right. That's correct. They've been gracious enough to let me come in, <laughs> basically unannounced, and this entire stack of PS1 is up for grabs. My general strategy right now is I would love to be able to stay on pace for my PlayStation Project Challenge. So if I can find 10 solid games and get them for a solid deal, that would be amazing. But well, since I'm that. buying from a friend, I'll literally, I'll, I'll pay whatever he asks. Yeah. <laughs> so folks, we've got this entire stack to go through and see what 10 games we want. Ooh, A Bug's Life. This is definitely one that I played as a kid. Pipe Dreams 3D. That one just kind of looks a little weird. Very nice crash game. Second crash game of the challenge. Really excited to see that, honestly. Even though it's greatest hits, you just you can't go wrong with Crash Bandicoot. So this one, it's not on the list, but I'm definitely I'm still gonna pick it up. Yeah. Got a bunch of sports games. Not honestly as interested in those. We've already got both of the Final Fantasies that we wanted. Ooh, Gran Turismo 2. I believe we have Gran Turismo 1, and I believe I may have accidentally crossed Gran Turismo 2 off of our list. So we better actually get that one in the collection. I don't think it's super valuable, but this is best-selling PlayStation One game. If you guys didn't know. Ooh, a couple of sealed games here. That's kind of cool. Action Bass and Madden 03. And then a whole stack here of sports titles, which I think we're just gonna pass on. Well, actually, just kidding. We're gonna go for, we're gonna buy one of them because I don't wanna be that guy not buying any of the junk games. <laughs> Ooh, folks. This one right here is a list game, Tekken 3. We've got Tekken 4, this is another one. So many people suggested Tekken, I put two of them on our viewer suggestion list. This one is extremely exciting. Definitely best one we've found so far. We got six so far. Looking for four more if we can. Ooh, 007 Racing. I did not see that before. That looks kind of sweet. You guys will have to let me know if that is actually a good one. I've never seen that game before. Ooh, original Tekken. I think this is one that I'm probably gonna have to get as well, even though it's not on our list. Uh, it's just, it's iconic. Apparently I'm missing out on Tekken, so we're gonna do this one as well. Oh, folks, this is another one. I played as a kid. I didn't have room to put it on my nostalgia list. Look at that, Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. This is actually a pretty underrated racing game, I would say, at least as I remember it. So this is definitely gonna be in our stack as well. All right, folks, so the last two games that I picked out, Shrek Treasure Hunt and Ape Escape, which is another list game. Unfortunately, this one, it doesn't have the back cover, but as game number 10, if I can condition upgrade this, I will later on. Uh, but for now, we're gonna count it. So Pac-Man Case. Yes. Tell me, look through these games. Okay. We've got a solid okay. stack of What did you pick out here? We've got, let's let's go here. <laughs> just okay. said. Okay. We've got Bugs Life. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Bugs Life, Pipe Dream, Crash, Gran Turismo. Ooh, I like that. Came out on there. And I do expect you, just upon seeing these, to come up with a perfect market value immediately. Oh. <laughs> like I was say. Each one. Hot Each Wheels one. Racing, and then the last two that I just you're mentioned. A, he's apparently the price chart. You're uh, at 10, you're at 10, 10 games? A total of 10 games in this stack. 10 games. What about. Just kidding. $5 a game. Folks, <laughs> that honestly, like, 
First of all, that's easily the most generous offer that I've gotten through this entire challenge. That's a ridiculously cheap bro number because <laughs> I'm guessing I told you about the challenge. He knows what we're doing. Honestly, I couldn't really in good conscience accept that. Why don't we say, okay. why don't we say 150? Dollar 50. Okay, one dollar 50 <laughs> each. So, so that would be what? 15 bucks a game? That Honestly, is totally still a fine. really good deal. Doesn't know what I got him for. Seriously, thank yeah. you both for the games and yeah, for man. having us in your basement. This has been an absolute blast. Got subscribe it. to Pac-Man Case, folks, and unsubscribe from Retro Rip. <laughs> for my son! Uh, so folks, I was going to try to film one more stop today. Ended up deciding not to because honestly, a lot of the time when I come to these conventions, I'm so focused on filming videos that I don't get as much time as I'd like to to just hang out with the people that I really like to. So for the second part of the day, we just went to a toy store together and ended up going out to dinner. And it was just a ton of fun. I don't regret at all not making another stop. Easily my most thrilling find of the day was this Toy Story 2. This brought me an absolute blast of nostalgia, not to mention we got our full 14 game quota of the day, which puts us perfectly on track for the convention starting tomorrow. So without further ado, folks, let's shelve this plastic. That, that kind of nice. Folks, I can barely even believe where this challenge has come in the last five days. We only have 30 more games that we need to get at the convention in the next two days. And we only have 12 games left on our, look at this measly little list left. And that's including the grails that I honestly didn't really think we'd be able to get. We've got $175 currently in the PlayStation budget, which means the next two days, we definitely have our work cut out for us. It's day six of collecting a hundred PlayStation games in just one week, and I'm about to lose my mind. We've finally arrived at the Southeast Game Exchange video game convention, and there are vendors as far as the eye can see. I've got 30 games left to collect, 12 games still on my list, and $175 in my pocket. This is the PlayStation Project. So folks, to start out, I'm at booth number one. I'm on a very specific mission today. I have four games left that I had in childhood that I don't have yet. Tigger's Honey Hunt, The Smurfs, 102 Dalmatians, and Disney Racing Tour. Those are my top priority. And guess who I'm here with today? It's me, Ricky. Editor and now cameraman Riff is going to be helping us out on the adventure. I'm excited, man. Can't think of a better way to end it. Let's find these four games. We got them. We got them. Let's do it. All right, so this is a booth that I actually bought some stuff from earlier today, and I saw they may have something that we need in the PlayStation section. Take a look down here, Riff. We've got a decent little smattering of PlayStation games, and what did I spy here? Disney Magical Racing Tour. The question is, is it complete? It is. For $20, not a bad price on that either. Oh, man. That is minty looking. I could not be more excited about this. And is this booth buy two, get one free? So I think I'm gonna have to find two more just to just to get the deal. All right, folks, so I have found the two that we're gonna pair with the one that we need. Blasto and Gauntlet Legends at 20 and 25. So one of these games is gonna be totally free, which I feel great about. Ooh. Oh, folks, look at this. Look at this, Spyro and Crash PlayStation. There's another There's one. There's another one. Look at that. Spyro, Spyro, Crash. Bandicoot, it's an Australian name. This is the kind of thing, if we somehow have money left at the end of this challenge, definitely gonna be buying these, because these are incredible. All 
right, folks, so looking at this little corner of PlayStation games here, literally the first one that I saw as I started looking down the titles right here, it's not one of the ones that is from my childhood, but it is one on our list, the original Ridge Racer for 10 bucks complete. Love to see it. Definitely gonna have to see if there's anything else in this stack right here that we need. So we're down to a total of $120 in the fund, but we've gotten two games off the list. I'm honestly so shocked that it's taken us this long to find 102 Dalmatians and Tigger's Honey Hunt. I feel like I see those in every game exchange and they're some of the last ones we found. Oh, oh no, that's Smurf Racer. Dang it. <laughs> I got so excited. I've been looking for Smurfs this whole time, but this is Smurf Racer. It's way more common. Ugh. You guys would be shocked how hard it is to find some of these games, even at a convention. Oh, this one's sick though. Ooh, 15. I watched this as a kid. I think it was a movie, a spin-off movie. I would honestly, I would love to add this to the collection. I'm gonna pass on it for now though, because we need to prioritize the games that either I had as a kid or that you guys recommended in the comments. Wow, what, what were the odds of that? Just had a random stranger whip this out. When I said I was looking for it, this is amazing. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> 18 bucks, not a bad deal, especially since it's complete. I'm really excited about this. We're gonna have to see if there are maybe any other ones in this stack over here that we need. I, I might be completely wrong and ruining it, but was this one? <laughs> was this one? Oh, no oh, cover art. Digimon World is what we're looking for. Dang it, I that tried. is unfortunate, though. Good try. It's, I'm a failure, like you always say. <laughs> Folks. We have found another one. Check this out, exact same boot. Seven bucks for Tigger's Honey Hunt and it's complete. I just, I, I, this is amazing luck. If we could find the Smurfs at this boot, blow my mind. So in addition to those other two that I mentioned, I'm also gonna try to throw in these lower dollar games to get a little bit better of a bundle deal because I thought I don't have a boxing game yet and I loved Land Before Time as a kid, but I never played this game. At this point, I decided to remove myself and take a little bit of a time out from the convention. I found myself a nice quiet corner to chill in for a little bit. I actually found this completely unused room that I have adopted as my time out space. To give you guys some behind the scenes of this video, what you may not realize is this is actually the third video that I've filmed so far today. And when you combine that with the fact that the convention center is actually super hot when it's really crowded, and the fact that I'm actually a natural introvert, being on for that amount of time in that kind of environment is actually a little bit draining. So I decided to use this short break to update my PlayStation list with the eight games that we had gotten. And because our funds had gotten down to $86, I decided to reach into the mystery, mystery GameCube, GameCube box. box. Doesn't really feel the same inside, does it? And do the day's whatnot auction for two GameCube games. I ended up pulling out Geist and Fantasy Star Online, which I immediately sold on whatnot because guess what? This convention center has Wi-Fi. They sold for a total of $81 after fees, which brought our PlayStation budget back up to a healthy 165 bucks. Folks. The first booth after being back from a break, we must have picked up some good luck because check this out. We've got, where is it, where is it? Here it is, Digimon World 3. You guys suggested Digimon World all the time. The numbers were all over the place. So I just wanted a Digimon World game. This one's complete, $47. The last one we saw was 60. So I feel like this is a solid deal. I was excited about that. I also found this was not on the list, but check this out. Whoa. <laughs> that could have been very that bad. That could have been <laughs> career ending. $20 on Space Jam, honestly, this is a total impulse buy, but it's speaking to me. Oh, look at that disc too. Where is it? There it is. This is the last one. Another viewer oh, suggestion on our list. Check this out. Legend of Dragoon Black Label 55. So a little bit pricey on that one, but if you're getting Black Label, wow, the discs look amazing. I'm gonna see if he'll do a bundle deal for me if I get all three of these. Maybe even throw in like a lower dollar one to make it a little sweeter. And how much lower dollar can you get than Putter Golf? Alrighty, so $110. Sticker value was $127, but our man here hooked us up. Really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. 
Okay, five bucks for this one seems pretty good, folks. At this point, I'm really just looking for three cheap games to keep us on quota and save as much money as we can for our finale day tomorrow because we've got some heavies on the list. Oh, this is actually a really good deal. Road Rash. Oh, Road Rash 3. Okay. Ooh, Mission Impossible though. 555. Five, five. Dang, folks. Three $5 games all complete. I'm not even going to negotiate. That's a fantastic deal and it puts us exactly on pace for the day. Will you do four for each? <laughs> So folks, I thought I was done here, but I just, I'm looking through this and some of these I honestly can't resist. Croc 2 for 10 bucks complete is just a great deal. And some of these other ones were sticking out to me as well. Peter Pan Return to Neverland for 10. You guys know I'm a sucker for those Disney licensed PS1 games. Digimon Rumble Arena. It's not complete, but for 10 bucks, I mean, it's just so hard to pass it up. $10, we overpaid folks on 102 dollars <laughs> Ooh, 10 bucks for Duke Nukem. Folks, I feel like honestly, the play right now is to pick up, to actually get ahead of schedule, to pick up as many cheap games as possible today, and tomorrow will literally just be list games and grails. So folks, here's the stack that we're gonna end up with, not because there isn't anything else that we wanna buy, but because this is literally all of our money. We're spending down to zero for the first time, but getting some amazing stuff. All right, folks, so this booth is packed right now, but I did decide we don't have any more PlayStation game budget like for the collection right now, but we always do have more flip budget to build the PlayStation budget. So I got a whole bunch of stuff at this booth here. Just wanted to show you guys before I made the purchase. I'll give you guys the full roundup later. All right, folks. So I've retreated back again to our secret room to update the PlayStation list and also take stock of all the items that we bought to flip from the last vendor to see how much profit we'll have to spend tomorrow. Folks, after much calculation, I've determined that tomorrow we need 11 more games to finish our PlayStation list, and we only have two more non-Grail games to find. I added up all the profit that we got from the last vendor. Shout out to Mitch for hooking us up. And it looks like the expected profit on all of these games is around $160. So given that information, I'm gonna make it my personal mission tomorrow to fill this list up, find and purchase these two games, and maybe, just maybe, one of our other Grails. So folks, on that note, with 160 bucks in our pocket, let's get back to the hotel and shelve this plastic. All right, folks, huge day ahead of us tomorrow. I've spent the last seven days building a 100 game PlayStation collection from scratch using no money out of pocket. And now on day seven, I only have 11 games to go to get to 100, and I only have six specific games left on my list that I wanted to have in this collection. But here's the problem. Four out of the six specific games I have left on my list are hundred plus dollar grail games. And I only have $160 in the budget right now. So the goal today, the strategy is just gonna be to hand this tiny list to vendors, see how many games they might have and what deal we can possibly swing. Excuse me, do you have any of these games by chance? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll come back later, no problem. I'm looking for these PlayStation games here. Do you happen to have any of those? Especially the Smurfs. I've been really struggling with the Smurfs. No, no Smurfs, unfortunately. Do you guys happen to have any of these, do you know? We have Silent Hill. You do have Silent Hill? Where was it? Down here? Yeah, that excitement's not gonna last very long, Caleb. Right there. Okay, it's gotcha. Legit. Okay, oh. shoot. I'm looking for I'm looking for complete. Thank you though, I appreciate it. Strike three, you're out! Do you guys happen to have any of those? Uh, is that PS1 on Silent Hill? Yes. Yes, we do. It is dun, 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 $200. Ooh, black label. Wow, this is a nice copy. I'm, so at the moment, this is out of my budget, uh, but I will definitely keep this in mind. Okay. Thank you. I will for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, guys. 
for these PlayStation 1 games. I believe I have Silver Star Saga. Do you really? Yes. Oh, how did I miss it? Oh my goodness, could I see it? Wow. This is one that I honestly did not think I'd be able to check off the list. Oh, it's so nice. Wow. The discs look really good too. You had 150, is that right? Did you have any wiggle room on it, do you know? 140. 140? I would appreciate that. Yeah, I can do cash. Thank you, sir, I appreciate that. All right, so I did find one other one at this point. Because they gave me a discount, we've got $20 left in the fund. I was just curious, sir, would you be willing to do this guy for 20? Only for the Phoenix resale. Thank you, I, I appreciate that so much. So folks, we've got two games now, one of our grail games all ready today. I can't even believe it, but we live literally spent ourselves down to a zero dollar budget, which makes this the perfect time to sell the last bit of the GameCube collection that I brought on this trip. Let's go do that. So I went back to my secret room to do something that I had been debating in my mind for the last six days. So folks, I have with me here again the Mystery, Mystery GameCube, GameCube box. box. And the last two games I picked out for it are Zoo Cube and Spirits and Spells. And these are both really awesome games from the collection, but I know that they're not gonna be enough to get me the three grails and two other collection games that I really need. But folks, I gotta be honest, I have one other game that I brought from my GameCube collection. I didn't put it in the mystery box because I didn't know if I was going to want to sell it. And that is Gotcha Force. This game goes for six to eight hundred dollars and honestly is pretty special to me. But folks, what has become even more special to me than one GameCube game is this series. The last seven days have been so fantastic and so challenging that I will gladly sell off a grail game to give this series the finale it deserves. Got a lot of bidders on this, 321 so far. And St. Bill's, congratulations, a really solid deal on this game. I'll give you guys a look. We do have a couple of inserts in here, along with the game. John, congratulations on that one. Really appreciate you. Last one today, folks, Zoo Cube. And this one, I believe, is CIP. She's her 33, really appreciate you on that one. The whatnot auction went as good as I could have possibly hoped. Zoo Cube sold for $41, Spirits and Spells sold for 99, and Gotcha Force sold sold for $5.51, which is a bit less than I paid, but if I'm gonna give deals to anyone, I want it to be my WhatNot community who has given me so much support over this series. Which leaves us with $603 to spend on these PlayStation games. Here's the problem. The total value of these is probably around a thousand bucks. So what we're gonna do right now is try to get a feel for the convention floor of what the heck is actually out there so that we can make a decision of how to allocate our last funds. I would love to get these two honestly, but of these three, I have no idea. I'm looking for these five PlayStation games. Do you happen to have any or know where they might be? Silent Hill. Ooh, honestly, dude, this copy's really clean too, and it's 20 bucks less, so that's definitely, that's definitely a good one to know. I'm wondering if you've seen any of these games. Oh, you do have it. Do you know, do you know what price you have on it? So they said that they have this one here, Dragon Quest Seven. It's a hundred bucks which I didn't realize at the time I would have put this in the grail category. This was a viewer suggestion. You, could I take a look at it? Oh, this is nice shape too. So missing manual looks like, but it does have both discs. You do 90 on it? Okay, that's really good to know. Honestly, I feel like I definitely should do this one. Since this is the last viewer suggestion, I think, I think that that would just be a really good move. I, I don't care as much about Silent Hill. I'm not a horror guy, but also these guys have been great to me through the whole convention. I also found this Tetris Plus, which I was thinking about earlier in the series, which for 10 bucks, I think we're gonna go ahead and throw in. These are the last PlayStation games I'm looking for. Do you guys happen to have any of those or know where I can find one? I'm looking for these four PlayStation games. Do you happen to have any? Alrighty. Do you have any of these PlayStation games? You don't? It was at this point that we started to have a lot of trouble asking a ton of vendors if they had anything but Silent Hill. We were having a lot of trouble and I honestly went to kind of a bad place. I'm worthless. You should leave me here with the rest of the garbage. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. I will not fail you. Tumba 2, but I'm looking for the regular Tumba, 
uh, and this one is a reproduction art, so I'll pass on that. We definitely, we know that we can buy at least one more Grail today. My hopes are rising. I would love to find the Smurfs, though. So let's see, let's see if we can. Austin, I've got a random question, a strange request. It was at this point in the day that we decided to switch tactics and recruit the owner of the convention. All right, attention vendors. If anybody here has the Smurfs game on PlayStation 1, we have a desperate buyer who is in desperate need of it. Please let us know, and he will come and immediately buy this game from you. Smurfs racing. Not the right one. Ah, I tried. I'm sorry. I'm dead inside. It was after 20 minutes of standing around with my sign at the front of the convention hall that it slowly dawned on me that nobody, nobody had, had the Smurfs. The Smurfs. The thing is, I knew when starting this series that I most likely wouldn't be able to find and buy the Grail games that were in blue on the bottom. I really was secretly hoping that I would be able to find all the games from my childhood, but the thing is, with series like this, you can't plan out the whole narrative. You can't always control everything. I'm coming to grips with that slowly and realizing that we still have $503 to spend on these games if we are able to find them, and that's a fantastic conclusion for me. As we headed back into the convention center to pick out the last games of the series, I had to ask myself, did this series accomplish its goal of proving that opportunity is everywhere? And after 90 plus games and spending hundreds of dollars over the course of seven days, I can say with certainty, it did not. Because the reality is, if it weren't for all the help that I received from my friends along the way, this series would have fallen flat on its face. Honestly, if there was any takeaway from this series, it's not that opportunity is everywhere, but rather that relationships are everything. Folks, we've realized over the course of the day that not just Klonoa, not just the Smurfs, but also Toomba are not available at any of these booths. But we're back here at Upstate Games because they do have this beautiful Silent Hill. And honestly, these guys have treated us so well over the course of this series. I want to buy the rest of the six games that we need to complete the 100 games right here. And because we have so much money in the fund, we can actually get some really cool stuff that I didn't expect to be able to. So folks, after much deliberation, taking recommendations from multiple people around here, our seven final games of the collection. Silent Hill, Emperor's New Groove, you know I love my Disney. Vagrant Story, absolutely iconic. Bloody Roar in mint condition. 40 winks for only $20. 50 cents per wink, not too bad. Contra, and finally, Editor If, Can I Get a Drum Roll? Legend of Mana for $70. Folks, I cannot believe the absolute heat we were able to pick up in this one last purchase riff. Let's give our final update to the PlayStation poster board. Folks, for the last time in the PlayStation Project, let's shelve this plastic. Folks, the series took seven days to film. It's gonna take another month to edit, but it only takes one second to subscribe. So if you've enjoyed this journey along the way, that would mean a ton. And until next time, I will catch you guys on the flip.